to all the preppers out there and the people that want to start prepping, has Pandora's box been opened? We're going to cover that question here in a second. Stay tuned. So, the question stands, has Pandora's box been opened? And let's clarify one thing real quick. Get this right out of the way. I don't care if you're a Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, whatever you are. All right, they're all in cahoots together and all they care about are themselves. It's all a big club and we're not in it. So, now that we got that out of the way, has Pandora's box been opened? Now, you have the president who stated yesterday he's cutting funding to the WHO, um, which, you know, we do give the most amount of money um, to the WHO. Um, but it's right now a time to cut money to them. Um, once again, you know, it's just some way for the president to place blame somewhere else besides himself, which is a typical thing that happens all the time. Um, but in retrospect of what I just said, um, if you cut funding and stuff to the WHO at this point in time, uh, they are the ones that are gathering the information from all the countries that are being affected by this virus in which you know you're talking about basically the whole world and their scientists and doctors and everything are working to come up with um, ways to treat this either through vaccines or through um, medicine drugs whatever else instead of using um, as we are here in America, you know, we're pushing the malaria drug and the z pack and everything else. And um, we do not know what the repercussions of this are going to be down the road. Yes, it might help some people out of a bad situation at this point in time. But will it create, let's say, um, Pandora's box down the road with other things that are happening to these people, such as side effects? Moving on. Also, with the president, he is wanting to reopen the government as soon as possible, which is really basically opening Pandora's box. If you sit back and think about it, if you're not really getting a control on this situation, and yes, there are some of these states and stuff that are starting to report, quote, they're rounding the curve, they're, you know, and everything else. But as the scientists and doctors and everything else state that this is going to come back again. Um, in 1918 with the flu, when, you know, the, in that pandemic back then, uh, I came through one wave and then it came through a second wave and was just devastating. You know, they estimated that there was 500 million um, people that had the flu. And 50 million people worldwide now died from the flu. And there was roughly about 625,000 Americans that died from the flu. We knew nothing about that, you know, and now we have, you know, vaccinations and everything else. And that's what we need to get for this and more testing in order to open the government back up. Now, he'd just like to flip the switch and turn it right back on, which I don't agree with. Um, I think it needs to be staged, just like how a lot of the governors have been talking. You know, it's like um, Governor Cuomo said, um, not that I'm pushing anybody in particular, but he had a very good dem demonstration on this. It's like opening the valve. You got to open the valve a little bit and watch the meter. And if all of a sudden your cases start to spike, you open it too far, then you got to close it back a little bit. Or we're going to be right in the same boat as we are now. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's a never-ending battle. But that would be a devastating move, I believe, on the president's part just to flip the switch and tell everybody to go back to work and go back to school. So you've got <clears throat> the president also took in... Uh, uh, he struck that oil deal this past weekend with uh, Saudi Arabia and Russia. Um, they ended up uh, agreeing to cut uh, 9.7 million barrels of oil a day to try to boost our economy. 
Uh, that backfired on Monday and the stock market tanked again um, because the stock market said that wasn't enough because we have such a uh, supply of oil here um, that just didn't, uh, you know, wasn't enough for them to, to boost our oil prices and make the price of oil go up, which means the price of your gas goes up while you're not working, which makes no sense to me. But once again, follow the money. All right, moving on. We have uh, here in Florida, we've got uh, our governor, DeSantis. You know, um, he's looking, he wants to reopen the schools. Now schools get out here in uh, mid-May, you know, and he's looking at opening them. Uh, he would like to open them on the beginning of May. So they go to school for two weeks. Why? They're already doing all their schoolwork from home. You might as well just let them finish out for two weeks. Yes, maybe the kids won't get sick, but has nobody thought about the fact that um, they can be the carrier of this and they can bring that home uh, to their parents or grandparents and infect them with the virus? Just a stupid move. There's just no common sense. And speaking of no common sense, he just declared, I think it was on Monday, it might have been Tuesday, I'm not sure exactly what day it was, but the WWE, on for your Monday night fans out there that watch wrestling on Monday night, he has declared them essential workers. Really? Essential workers, the WWE. What are they going to do? Put masks and... Uh, uh, gowns on and go in the hospitals and uh, bounce people out of there? I don't know. I don't see how they're essential workers. You know, you toss people around a ring and throw them out of the ring and... But I guess that's essential. Welcome to Florida. Only in Florida. So let's move on down to Pike. Alright, <clears throat> let's talk about... Uh, um, some real things that are really happening that are going to affect a lot of American people. And that is food shortages. Now I'm telling you right now, if we do not have food shortages um, come fall into this coming winter or sooner, it, it will be a miracle and everybody should thank God for that. Because as I speak right now, farmers here in Florida are plowing thousands and thousands and thousands of acres of all types of fruits and vegetables and everything else right back into the ground. You have dairy farmers um, up in the Midwest and stuff that are dumping thousands of gallons of milk a day down the drain. And then you have um, Smithfield just announced that they closed down their largest uh, packing plant, processing plant for pork products, you know, your ham, bacon, and all this kind of stuff. And I know a lot of people don't like Smithfields anyways because they kind of get a bad rap, but you also have to realize is they are the larger, largest producer of the pork products that are on our shelves. Um, so what's going to happen is, is this is all going to put a strain on the food supply chain. Um, there still has been nothing said that if China actually did get their rice crop in on time because of the virus and stuff, so um, the exporting of rice coming from China um, could be a hindrance come towards the middle to late part of this year. Um, one thing to remember with this is you may still find some stuff that may be in the stores or they may still be putting some stuff out on the shelves. Uh, what's going to happen is, is the prices of all these said products, your fruits and vegetables and your meats and all that milk, dairy, anything dairy, you know, from your yogurt, butter, cottage cheese, whatever, cheese, all that is going to skyrocket in price because all of a sudden there will be a shortage of those products. Now I've been trying to stay away from this subject here. I've been doing a series on hurricane season 2020 this coming this year and to try to bring people aware of what is uh, coming. 
Um, you do have the oceans are warming up a lot faster. I mean, here in Florida, it, Monday it was uh, 97 degrees. Yesterday it was 92 degrees. It's supposed to be 91 degrees today. And the oceans are warming up a lot faster. I was checking the buoys that are off the Florida East Coast. And they're pushing anywhere between 75 and 77 degrees. And in the Gulf, they're already over 80. So all you need is 80 or above. And these storms just kind of like love the water. You know, they're like a little kid. You put it in a bathtub with the bubbles and hey, we're ready to rock and roll. So, I, but I'm just trying to bring people's awareness to that. But I felt compelled to do a video on this to get the message out. Now, you just have to remember that the government doesn't want people to think for themselves. They do not like people that actually sit down and put thought into a situation. They like obedient people that listen and obey exactly what they're told to do. That's just how the government works, especially nowadays. You know, and it doesn't matter if you're Republican, if you're Democrat, it really doesn't matter because they all got their hand in the kitty somewhere and they're all getting paid from somebody to do something, you know, and you look at all these people out here that are starving, that don't have money, that haven't received their, their unemployment checks because of all these unemployment websites and systems in a lot of states basically are just crashing because of the amount of people that are filing for unemployment and they can't handle it, you know, because their systems are so, you know, inadequate. And, but the government sits back and these people are still collecting all their paychecks and everything, you know, both sides, you know, but we're plowing all this food into the ground. We're dumping all this milk and everything else. Why can't they diverse a way to uh, distribute all those products to the American people makes no sense to me, you know, but you know, I just hope that people out there will sit back, open your eyes, take a look around, watch what's happening. Listen, open your ears, you know, listen to what's being said, you know, and then go and I mean, it's very easy to fact check something and see if it's the truth or not. All you need is the internet. It's, you know, it's right there in black and white, you know, and, you know, just pay attention. The one way that we're all going to get through this together is if we stick together. You're going to survive based on your knowledge how to survive a difficult situation on your supplies that you have put up or that you have um, bought over the years, you build up your food supply, your, you know, all your supplies, you know, you, not just your food, your medicine, you know, um, all that kind of stuff. You know, the, the prepper community all of a sudden now has been looked at as um, we're not crazy anymore, you know, and people are wanting information on how to get going. And now is a tough time to do it because at the grocery stores, if they do have products, everything is limited. So your best bet on doing something like that would be your big box stores. So in ending, I just hope that everybody out there pays attention um, to what is going on. Like I said, open your eyes, listen with your ears. Read between the line, folks. Just remember, the government is out for themselves, all right? It's all about money. And I have said that in several of my videos. I've commented on several people's videos out there to follow the money. Everything leads back with the money. If you follow the money, you're going to find out exactly why. You know, they're not looking out for us, the American people. The only ones looking out for us is us, period. So my name is Charles. This is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. This has been a quick little news brief, and I hope everybody stays safe out there. And until next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.